Okay, hi there, welcome to Car Pervert. Uh, I'm Johnny Smith. Um, today I'm a little bit flustered because it's MOT day for my 1968 Dodge Charger, which I've just got out of hibernation and I'm late for the MOT station, but also I haven't driven it in a, quite a long time because back in back in 2016 I was racing my flux capacitor electric car and I'm not racing any electric drag car this year unless someone builds me one and gives it to me I reckon it is running a little bit rich, you might see it's, it's hunting a bit on, on warm idle. Not been on the road in, in, in kind of eight months probably, um, so I'm just a little bit cautious, so if you have to excuse me for sort of having one ear on the engine and just wanting to listen that everything's okay with it because I love this car to pieces last thing I want to do is damage it um, those of you who uh, know me um, already or know the cars that I have or, or know that um, I've had this car since 2008 so not nine years crumbs and um, it was a car that I bought uh, in San Diego and imported it myself uh, as a non-runner um, a numbers matching non-runner it's a 383 big block four-speed Hurst manual um, quite a rare option set on this car apparently it's one of apparently it's only one of 259 made in this spec which meant it had no power steering um, no power brakes, so drums all round, non-servo drums all round, and uh, 383 big block, four on the floor, and pretty much no other options apart from a radio. I think there were no other options. Um, as a consequence, very physical car to drive, but really, really enjoyable. And the thing about this car is, since um, since it's been rebuilt or mechanically rebuilt at least and it's had a, a lot of stealth restoration in the body done by that I mean I wanted the car to look like it was still patinated the way I, I kind of bought it so uh, I had Tim at Roadhouse Retro do a really really good and, and pretty, pretty long-winded um, restoration on it actually although it just doesn't look it that's a testament to his skill um, the whole back end was rotten, which is pretty much par for the course with Mopars. But yeah, I've had it, I've had it nine years, and I'm, I never intend to sell it unless something goes badly wrong in my life. Um, and it's just a wonderful thing to to drive in Britain, where it's highly inappropriate. The first thing is that people ask me is I bet it handles like an absolute pig, and actually, not true. Uh, although we did rebuild the underneath of this car, so it's got all new torsion bars, it's got leaves at the back from a, a Hemi car, where they have an additional leaf, I think, um, and probably a different level of tempering. Um, we've got all new shock absorbers, KYB shocks, uh, all new bushes. The engine was rebuilt, the numbers matching 383 was rebuilt, so a pretty normal spec, uh, electronic ignition, it's got a currently got an Edelbrock vacuum secondary carb on it, which I'm not massively happy about um, because it seems to be more suited to automatics than manuals. So I've got a Holly double pumper that's in the boot actually. That I got back through uh, my luggage when I was working in the States a few years back, that still never fitted it. So this uh, this summer uh, the charger will have a couple of. Um, little presents a holly double pumper and a needlebrock 383 performer inlet manifold and crucially uh, a new exhaust system because it's needed one since I rebuilt it 
the exhaust is really quiet, which is probably why you can't hear it. Everyone's expecting it to be rolling thunder, but actually, uh, almost tragically, it's quiet and quite composed. Now, I did that intentionally because when I got the car, it came with these huge silencers that were like two and a half foot long. They're ridiculous. They were already with the car, and I kind of went, oh, well, just leave them on. Uh, and also I wanted to run the engine in nice and carefully without wanting the temptation to squirt it. Okay, rev it like that. That's... Now. That's louder. But this car's quite tight um, and it and it corners relatively well. There's not nowhere near as much body roll as, as other American cars I've had. Um, and it's quite light given that it's got no extras on it. And I think people do forget that although these American cars, a lot of them are really big, um, with massive overhangs and ridiculous styling. In the case of the Charger, this is a monocoque car, it doesn't have a separate chassis, it's actually not that it's actually not that heavy. And it's got a, well the 383 is a 6.3 litre uh, V8, so in the olden days when it was new, and maybe now, when since being rebuilt, it's 330 HP, or 335 HP. It's all about the torque though, to be honest, because you can stick it in fourth gear, and you can like power up from about 15 miles an hour. The four-speed manual was a car uh, that's quite sought after, an original four-speed, with non-console. I don't know if you can see in that shot, but there's there's no centre console on this. It's a bench seat with a buddy seat, they call it. So if it was the 60s and you didn't care about your kids being strapped in, you'd have your kid in the middle, or your first girlfriend, and then you'd have your second girlfriend over there. Whatever. But So the, uh, there's a little bump on the trans tunnel where the four-speed hearse shifter goes. And... Um, it shifts gear really well. I've had the linkage uh, all rebuilt and the uh, as well as the clutch linkage because the bushes on those go crusty and awful. And actually, it's um, it's it's good fun to shift. The clutch is very heavy. It's a sort of fast street clutch, uh, not a race clutch, but it is physical. I have to say, my knee starts clicking after driving it for more than about an hour and a half, and I'm not even that old. Of that whiny transmission. I live in a very narrow old Georgian town uh, which doesn't lend itself brilliantly to left-hand driving Detroit monsters but that's half the charm. I don't find left-hand drive cars difficult to, uh, to position on the road anymore. I just make sure I hug the, the curb with with this side and then you're pretty much safe over there and you can still see the bonnet and everything the indicators now work which is great because when i first got it out the garage yesterday uh they didn't uh, and all i've done is wiggled a few wires <laughs> the joy of old cars Okay, 
we're nearly at the uh, MOT station. I like MOTs because although we kind of dread them in, in, on the one hand, on the other hand, it's a good time to get to re-familiarise yourself with the car and know what jobs you perhaps need to jot down. And I don't agree with MOT exemption of pre-1960 cars. I think it's great if you keep on top of jobs on your cars, but if you're someone who's a bit of a skin flint, I think it's actually potentially a lethal idea. Right. Oh, up. My friend Ed, who's the MOT man here, he, uh, he's got himself a, a Mopar himself. <laughs> Don't you just love MOTs? Bring it in. Yeah. Do you want me to just put it there? Yeah, put it down yeah. there for a minute. Oh, you brought yours in? Yeah. Is that noise is a Harley Davidson because the garage I have my car MOT'd at is, um, is a car garage, but it's also a Harley Davidson dealer. Yeah, that's right. And the bikes do sound better than the car. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Y